Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to talk you through some tips and tricks for starting your journey in Dream of the Wise. A few things you definitely need to know, especially if you're finding it daunting. So, I fell behind in Neo 2. If you saw my video about things I wish Team Ninja knew, basically a rant but made with good intentions, I burnt out on Neo 2 and needed a break. As a result, since the darkness in the Capital DLC I've been playing catch up. I wasn't over leveled, I hadn't even finished Dream of the Demon in fact, and I definitely hadn't saved up any Amrita to level up with before walking into Dream of the Wise. I've loved the DLC so far and I've made myself a new build using the fist weapons. I've finished off my playthrough of the darkness in the capital missions on Dream of the Strong and then pushed through Dream of the Demon, mainly just taking care of the main missions. I've since started on Dream of the Wise and wanted to share what I've learned so far. This video will be similar to my video on making the transition from your first playthrough into Dream of the Strong, but there are a few very important differences. If you enjoy the video and find it useful, do me a favour and leave a like or comment before you go. It makes a huge difference to the channel. Okay, so, tip one. You can absolutely walk into Dream of the Wise if you're under level. I know this because that's exactly what I did. This tip leads into the others, so bear with me while I talk you through it. I managed to finish off a Tokamaro in Dream of the Demon at level 336, which opened up the DLC missions on Dream of the Demon and the starting zones on the new difficulty, Dream of the Wise. I then looked at the recommended levels for starting out in Dream of the Wise. Village of the Cursed Blossoms, the first mission, is recommended for level 380. And quite honestly, after doing a few runs of the boss rush missions in the Afterglow region, I realised that I really didn't want to grind out 44 levels this way. I almost definitely would have burnt out again. I also didn't fancy running the DLC missions again just yet. The newer missions and the DLCs seem more difficult to me, perhaps that's just me, but it seems silly to hurt myself going through those on Dream of the Demon for little to no real reward. So I just thought I'd give it a go on Dream of the Wise. What's the worst that can happen? On screen now you can see where I was when I jumped in. Level 338 with Divine Gear at around plus 18 to plus 20 all round. I figured I could use Benevolent Graves if I had to and maybe just drag myself through it. Perhaps I'd get a few lucky drops and raise my level and gear score up just enough to push on. I was surprised to find that not only could I drag myself through it, I was actually wrecking it without having to call for help or use any graves. On screen now you can see my first run through of the Village of the Cursed Blossoms. Don't get me wrong, my damage was low and killing things took some time, but perhaps the success was something to do with the build I'm using. It's nothing fancy or particularly well optimised, but it wrecked key on both humans and on yokai, which meant that as long as I could start my fights well, once I got going, I could gradually just grind the enemies down. If there is enough interest, I can showcase where my build was at if you like. Let me know in the comments. So that's tip one, you absolutely can walk into Dream of the Wise early. So far I've managed to clear the first two main missions and a few side quests, and this has really started to bring my gear along. Tip 2. This is where the guide differs from my previous one about transitioning to the next difficulty up. You want to take it slowly this time, don't speedrun, especially if you're under level like I am at the moment. You absolutely want to kill almost everything. You get a lot of Amrita which will help you increase your level. Additionally, you're looking for Divine Level 180 gear to soul match and you're also hoping for ethereal item drops. This is part of the first set of gear grinding. Eventually you'll probably be replacing everything, but initially this is what you need. This leads us on to tip 3. You can't soul match ethereal items to your divine items and increase their rarity, unless you manage to pick up an ethereal item which has this on it. If you find the rarity matching bonus, you can use that to boost up your current gear. Now, in the long run, replacing your current gear with ethereal gear you've dropped will be better because the star rolls are much more frequent and you'll find much better stats, but that's going to take some time. For now, you just want to make your life a little easier to continue your progress. So step one is to make sure all of your divine gear is level 180 by soul matching. Then you want to start either soul matching to ethereal, if you've dropped any gear with the rarity transfer bonus on it, or replace your gear completely with new ethereal drops. Which brings us to tip 4. Now that you've opened up Dream of the Wise, you'll start to notice new attributes available on gear. If you go to tempering on your accessories, you may find these attributes. Lucky drop. You can get this for armour, weapons and for accessories. 
This means that you have a higher chance of dropping gear you're currently wearing, which means you just might find an Everreal replacement for your current set to start working on. The drop rates are actually pretty good, and I managed to find a couple of armour pieces myself already. Tip 5. You might want to consider reworking your stats. Now that you've opened up Dream of the Wise, you will be able to go past 99 points on your character stats. What triggered this decision for me was that I got a lucky drop on a scroll of the wise, which I managed to do. Yep, still way under level. It got me a new stat that I wanted to use. My current build is based on strength, but I needed 150 strength to actually use this. So I used a book of reincarnation and reworked my character stats. I also went back and remodeled my weapon again. It was dual remodeled for strength and heart to max out my damage with the previous setup, but now I wanted to focus it back on strength only, to take advantage of the new stats. What that means is that with the same number of stat points and no improvements to my gear, I managed to increase my base weapon damage from 2756 to 2977. I'm short on key and key regeneration, but I'm using barrier talismans to make up for the gap for the time being, until I can gradually bring my heart and courage stats back up. Tip 6. This is based on a silly mistake I made. Make sure to be careful when dismantling or selling items at the blacksmith. I had a habit of selecting all and then either selling or dismantling everything which was exotic or lower. The problem is that now there is a new option for doing the same, but for divine or under which I accidentally did. I ended up losing a spare Yasukani Makatama as a result, so be careful. Tip 7. This touches back on your build again, and I'm not advising you to go changing your build just yet, but if you can find a way to work around the Guardian Spirit, Ho-Oh, there is an ability on that spirit called Calming Breath, which means that as soon as you are out of combat you'll automatically begin to heal up. This is a lifesaver on higher difficulties, especially when you're having to spam your elixirs in certain fights. It means that all you need to do is survive the fight you're in right now. If you're one fight away from the next shrine, this can mean the difference between making it there or having to start over from scratch. Tip 8. Look out for the new grace set bonuses on Ethereal gear. You might also get lucky and find a grace set bonus transfer stat like I did so that you can start building toward making the most out of this in the short term. At the moment my plan is to keep with my current build for the time being, but if I can gradually build up to using 3 pieces of the Grace of Susano bonus as a secondary set, it will mean I can get a further reduction in damage taken and key recovery speed bonus which I really need at the moment. Tip 9 is for if you hit a brick wall. Perhaps you try out a mission and you just can't get through it. Go grind out some more of the Village of the Cursed Blossoms. If you manage to get through it the first time, then you can do it again. Picking up Ethereal loot is your goal once you've got everything to 180. All you need is a few pieces, either as flat out replacements for your build, or as something you can soul match to your existing gear. Sometimes one piece of gear can make all the difference, and with all the new attributes you'll now have access to, it could take just a single loot drop for you to make a breakthrough. Tip 10. This is a bonus tip. Take a break, dammit. I need to take my own advice on this one, I'll admit, but if you hit a brick wall and you start to struggle, step away from the game, grab a bite to eat, speak to someone and have an actual conversation for more than two minutes. Come back when you've had some sleep or a shower, and not only will you feel better and smell better, you'll probably go smash the boss you were struggling on too, and you can continue your progress. I hope you found this video useful, leave me a like and comment if you don't mind, sub if you're new, I'll wrap it up there. Thank you for watching, take care, stay safe, bye bye now.